Hello guys, welcome back to Patrick TV GH. This is your savings tutor, Mr. Patrick Ba Abankwa. I welcome you to another episode on Patrick TV, Ghana's number one financial channel. Um, last week when we met, we discussed how to handle difficult customers, difficult in quote, part one. And I had a discussion with the renowned customer service expert, Mr. Harrison Ahogba, Executive Director for Springs Premier Limited. We watched a video before we discussed last week's episode, and we are going to do the same for today. But before we do that, we want to take a short commercial uh, break, and we'll be right back. Hello guys, welcome back from the commercial break. As I said in the introduction, today we are going to look at the part two of handling difficult customers. The scenario of how you can handle a difficult customer. When you are back from the break, we want to now look at the issues relating to handling difficult customers. Hello, good morning. Yes, last time I took a form from you, so I'm submitting the loan application form. Okay. Yeah, you are. Okay. But Daniel, your form is not complete. You can't just apply for a loan with this form. If you want to access a loan with us, you need an ID card, a passport picture, your three months pay slip, a guarantor, and a utility bill. You can't just submit this form for just a loan. Oh, but you didn't tell me about this when I came earlier. You just told me I needed an ID card and I didn't need to have an account. And then have, for the account opening, I've done that. This is Me? Okay, I'm, let me check if indeed you have an account with us yes, first. Yes, yes, check. My, my name is Edan Ba. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ba, your balance is even just 300 cities. For you to have a loan with us again, once again, you need to make a deposit of 100 Ghana cities every day. Yes. How do you apply for a no, loan with a balance that of 300 cities? You said I should make money. Deposits, make monthly payments. And that's what I've been doing now. Yes, ma'am, when, when was this? Because every customer that comes in, I give them the accurate requirements in order to access a loan. Hey. I'm sure you must have met another person, unfortunately. So kindly bring all the requirements. So I can get access to the loan? Of course not, sir. Hey. So. Is this how you treat your customers here? Gentlemen, it is not. I can't give you my money. I'm just a worker here. Huh. And the company has come up with their own policies and requirements for assessing a loan. Oh, so, so it is how you treat people. How have I treated you? Hello, guys. Another depressing video. Uh, but we are, we are lucky to have in our midst Mr. Harrison Ahogba, customer service expert and executive director for Spring. Premier Limited, who is going to again walk us through today's video. Mr. Harris, you are welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, nice uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you. How is the family? By the grace of God, we are doing well. Uh, uh, we, we thank God. Once again, I said depressing video. <laughs> so in part one, we witnessed the customer mm -hmm. going to the shop mm -hmm. for inquiries on loan. Uh, uh, application. Yeah. Okay, so he's given some form of uh, background what he needs to bring in. Now, in the second video, we see the same customer going back to the bank with the documents and processes. Mm -hmm. And he's being told new things that he didn't hear from part one. 
as a customer service expert, once again, want to start from your perspective, the general value of the video before we go into, into the specifics. So thank you, Patrick, and uh, thank you, viewers, for opportunity to present to you this interesting topic. So I will say that my first observation is to say that the company is very lucky to even have this customer who was not treated well in the part one video we see coming back after all that he has gone through, which should not be the case. So again, your word depressing summarizes that the service provider or the frontline officer who again, like I said, represents the institution all aspects could and can do better and i believe once we go deeper into the tactics going forward our viewers will learn and at various levels of their customer service delivery they'll be able to use these skills to better serve their customers yes the, the first thing i picked from the video is that i i feel the customer service person sees the customer as uh, i don't know someone that he's rather doing a favor. That is it. So, like I mentioned, and, uh, it's interesting for us to know and accept that customer service delivery, if you flip it, it's either you are receiving it or you are giving it. Okay. So always put yourself in the shoes of the customer. Mm -hmm. We would also say that the customer is rather doing us a favor, favor. by coming to our shop because he or she has options. But the customer needs the loan. He needs the loan. No, that is why at the first time of engaging the customer, there's this thing that we believe and we teach in our, uh, our training that once you win the customer, you have to win him for life 360. Okay. So once the customer walked into your space, whatever space it is, use every opportunity available to win that customer. Okay. So that if you have told the customer A, B, C, this is how it is done, this is when it will be delivered. This one cannot be done. The customer is clear in his or her mind what he's going to do. Reason is that now we have competition. Okay. The competition has moved beyond brick and mortar to technology. What if the particular industry we are talking about is, is a form of monopoly? Good. What happens? Because, okay. yes, when there's competition, mm -hmm. there's that fear. Mm -hmm. But in a sector that is monopolized, mm -hmm. how do, do you advise customer service? So persons to approach their customers. It's interesting you use the word monopoly. You and I know that in some few years back, most of our institutions, especially the financial institutions, were enjoying some form of monopoly. Yeah. Then you could say that NIB will say, I'm the only bank that I'm into investment banking. ADB will say, I'm the only bank into uh, agriculture finance. Yeah. But it has changed. So you might be having a monopolistic power now, but with time, it will just shed off. So you better have to adapt and do that quickly and see where you are going to be. So let me give you a typical example. You've heard a story when we were all growing up. One of the most common phones we all saw was Nokia. Okay. Where is Nokia now? One of the things we had in the past was Walkman, where you could put an earpiece with a cassette and where are they now? So if you say you, are, you have your strength in a particular space, very soon you will lose that strength. That is why it is important that any time a customer comes to us, we look beyond what we have even promised to do and see other ways of picking feedback okay. to better improve our service delivery. Okay, so now let's go into the video itself. Okay. Part one, you gave us some pointers. You said one, you should listen, mm -hmm. build rapport mm -hmm. with empathy, lower your voice, yes. assume others are watching, Good. know when to give in. Yes. Now this is part two. Yes. The customer is back. Yes. The first point you gave me before uh, tonight's session was that never get angry. That is it. Most of the time when customers come and they are giving us feedback about their frustration, their inability to assess a particular service or any other thing that we consider difficult, we get angry. Okay. We expect the customer, so we go and say that, and this is how it has been done. Why are you uh, shouting? If you rather get angry for someone who pays your salary, then the point is that you are not at the right place. So you don't even have to be angry. And here I'm not saying that don't express your side. It's about how you say it and when you interject. So if a customer comes and is saying, I did not like the way you spoke to me, you told me to bring this, you told me to that, and you rather be angry with the customer, like, don't you know that when you are going to apply for it, you need two passport side pictures? No. So anger doesn't play at all. Sometimes we get so upset. We should be able to distinguish between if a customer walks in and he or she is angry or is upset. Okay. But in between the line, you still have an opportunity to get something from that customer and 
change the story around. If you apply the things we said earlier, just listening, just trying to understand and build a rapport with the customer, you will not have to express any anger, but you'll be able to calm the customer down. In the same video, the second yes. video, yes. it appears the customer service is taking the matters personal. Mm. <laughs> you are saying that never take such a scenario personal. That is, the, the feedback the customer is giving you out of frustration, it is not about you, the person. It is it largely about the processing the systems. So okay. like it could surprise you that the customer service person we saw in the video might not have been properly oriented in the company about how things are done. Okay. So he, she lacks that gap of knowledge. She has that gap in knowledge. Okay. So what now she what she's told is what she's doing. Or what she might have observed when she came over okay. is what she's doing. Okay. So now that when the person says that I don't like this institution, this is how I do it, then you are like, Madam, please don't talk to me like that. Don't talk to me like that. This is not my company. I came here to work. If you have any problem, go and talk to management. So the question is, who is management? So if you take it personal, you think the person is attacking you, but rather take it as if the person is giving you a feedback so that you can improve your process. It could be communication, it could be timeliness of delivery the service, and it could either be about a system failure that is affecting your service delivery. Okay. The third thing you, you gave me was that, remember you are interacting with humans. That's it's a very big point. You know, all of us are under one form of pressure or the yeah. other. We are all human beings. We are not dealing with machines. Okay. People leave their homes with a lot of physical, emotional, spiritual, a lot of things going on in their mind. So if such people walk into your space, whether you are selling watches, whatever thing you are doing, think about it as you are dealing with a human being. And like okay. I said earlier, at another point in your life as a service provider, you'll be at the receiving side. Okay. So assuming this is a customer who needs this loan to go and clear or expand a business, and his hope is on the loan, and you told him three months time he should come. Okay. And he has said religiously towards the loan. Now he comes and you are telling him that he needs to provide another thing, this, that, before the loan can be disbursed in the next three months. He has lost six months of business. And if that loss also depends on his ability to pay his rent, children's school fees, you don't expect him to take it lightly. Okay. And if you are dealing with humans, you should be sensitive to know that there are emotions involved. Your calmness, like we said earlier, your listening, your rapport, you're not sh low, uh, shouting, and not, uh, as it were, uh, you lower your voice and listen to them, gives you a perfect opportunity for you to get the best out of the customer. So please and uh, please, it is never the case that you think it is personal and then you say that because the customer thinks that he has money, he can come here and talk to us anyhow. You need the customer more than he needs you. Okay. I think you, you've been able to summarize what we need to do. So in the scenario we just watched, the second one, what should be the way forward? What should be the final thing that should be done to the customer before he leaves? Okay. Thank you very much. So again, the point we have explained. They are not in a, a particular order. Okay. Depending on where you are and which customer you are interacting with, then you can deploy. There are some customers, immediately you listen to them, the problem is solved. Okay. There are some when you listen to them, it is not solved. They okay. shout. Okay. There are some, even when you empathize with them, it will not be solved. Unless there are some, you even have to write. So each customer and its way of handling. So that's why I said it's important to customize your skill set. Okay. So if somebody comes and you feel that there are some customers who don't like dealing with ladies. Okay. Some also don't like dealing with men. Okay. You have to be able to know that. So you know that customer comes, you know this one is Patrick's client. Okay. You find a way of dealing with it. So I would say that in summary, the first principle for us is that no customer is difficult. Okay. Never say a customer is difficult. See it rather as an opportunity the customer is giving you to okay. improve. I'll give you a scenario. When why do you think that uh, a brand of powdered soap like Omo has stood the test of time up to now? Ever since we were children, we all heard of Omo. There are other powdered soap in the industry. But if you send your son now to go and buy powdered soap, most of the time you say, go and buy me Omo. It is because with time, they have been able to understand the feedback from the market. And okay. They have inculcated it into trends so that now, when you go and buy Omo, you see blue, white, and other things because that's what competition is offering. If you consider the complaints 
of your customers as difficult, then you will not improve. And by the time you realize, somebody will do what they are complaining okay. about, and you will be taken out of business. So it's important for you to take feedback, not as a difficult situation, but something positive to help you. So I believe the video we have watched, the viewers will learn a lot, and you have an opportunity to watch Patrick TV again. Thank you very much, Patrick, for the opportunity. Thank you, Harrison, for your time. It's always a pleasure having a discussion with you. Okay. US, finally, we are concluding on handling difficult customers. I believe you have learned a lot listening to customers. Don't take things personal. And I believe that whatever business that you are running, whether you are employing one person, you are doing it yourself, you are in a company working for someone, these are the principles that you need to apply because the customer will always and is always the king in every situation because the customer is the one paying you. We we'll meet again next week with another educative session on Patrick TV GH. We also want to thank our sponsors, Adam City Estate, New Executive International School, and Springs Premier Limited. We we'll meet again next week with another educative session on Patrick TV GH, Ghana's number one financial channel.